Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to the course on basics of electric vehicle simulation part 1. This is a course that's specifically designed to teach you the fundamentals of various simulation techniques that are used to engineer various parts of an electric vehicle. Now, an electric vehicle has a lot of mission critical parts and that is why this is just part 1. In part 1, we will be primarily focusing upon the battery pack. In this module, you will essentially learn about fundamentals of different battery chemistries, how electrochemical potential is used to determine the cell voltage. Then we will primarily be focusing upon the various thermal issues that are associated with large battery packs. And then finally, we will teach you how you can actually simulate the heating and cooling processes of battery packs. Now before doing the simulation part we will also introduce you to analytical calculations. Alright, so the course is structured in a fairly simple way. You will be watching a bunch of videos and you can basically watch the videos at your own pace. Now after each video there might be certain challenges that you will have to attempt and you will be working on a couple of projects. Now the way the course works is fairly simple. You will be watching a bunch of videos and you will be attempting several assignments and projects. Alright, so let's get started with the curriculum and discuss in detail what you will be learning in this course. Alright, so before we take a look at the syllabus, I kind of wanted to explain key learning aids that have been introduced. Now since this is a fundamental course, it's very important to understand what are the topics that are covered and what are the topics that will not be covered. In addition to that, since it's a fundamental course, we kind of touch upon a lot of points. Now certain points have to be remembered. Right, so you will basically see this particular symbol against concepts that you definitely have to remember. Now given the complexity of the subject, it's a given that certain concepts cannot be discussed in detail. So here we will basically use a black box approach. We will essentially take a look at things that we care about and we will not go into excessive detail. Alright, so by the end of this course, you will be able to understand the need for electric vehicles. Though this is an easy point to understand, we actually present logical arguments for why electric vehicles and especially hybrid electric vehicles are a good starting point. Now, once we have done that, we will teach you different vehicle architectures with respect to hybrid electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles. And we will primarily compare and contrast these vehicle architectures in terms of the different components that are found and the different functionalities that they support. Once we have done that, we will help you understand the functional requirements of key components of an electric vehicle. And then as I mentioned in the start, we will be discussing the fundamentals of battery chemistry and we will slowly guide you and help you understand the need for a battery thermal management system. So once uh, we have helped you understand that, we will be teaching you how to derive an analytical model to estimate the steady state temperature distribution inside a battery. Once we have done that, we will also discuss the drawbacks of analytical methods, which will help me lay the foundation of computational fluid dynamics. Once we have done that, you will be learning the fundamentals of ANSYS Fluent and you will be simulating a simple battery thermal management system. Now, who will benefit from this course? If you are an undergraduate student majoring in mechanical engineering, automotive engineering, aerospace engineering or even electrical engineering and are interested in learning about electric vehicles, then you should strongly consider taking this course. If you are a graduate student who is venturing into the EV domain, then this course can add a lot of value. Now, for professionals who have no background in electric vehicles and computational fluid dynamics, this course is going to be extremely useful because this course is short and it covers a lot of topics at a shallow level. Now, for professionals who are already working in the EV domain, you might find bits and pieces here and there that you might find useful, but overall the content is going to be basic. Now, what is covered in this video? In this video, we will be talking about the course curriculum. We will explain to you why electric vehicles are the need of the hour. Now here primarily we will be talking about hybrid electric vehicles as they are a great trade-off between high C engines and pure electric vehicles. Once we have done that we will talk about key components, their functions and their engineering aspects of an electric vehicle. Now keep in mind that we will not be talking about all the components of an electric vehicle. We will talk about only key components. So once we have talked about the components and how they are engineered, we will talk about the need for simulations. Now many companies as of today use computational tools to reduce the engineering times. Right? Company can use up to 20 different simulation packages to do different things. Now for an electric vehicle there are several simulation use cases. You can use computational fluid dynamics to basically design a battery thermal management system. You can use an electromagnetic solver 
to design electric motors and you can also use a system level circuit simulator to basically design inverter components. Uh, similarly, your electric vehicle is filled with power converters, right? And uh, there are specific tools that are available to design DC-DC converters as well. Last but not least, your entire vehicle's aerodynamics can be optimized. Last but not least, the entire vehicle's aerodynamic aspects can be optimized by using computation fluid dynamics by performing external aerodynamics. Now, in this particular course, we will be talking only about battery thermal management system and we will not be talking about electric drive simulations, power converter analysis and external aerodynamic analysis. Now, let's drill down on each of these topics a bit more. Usually when people talk about electric vehicles, there are two points. The first point is that it's highly efficient and the second point is that it's clean. When it comes to efficiency, I'll talk about how is efficiency defined and we will compare internal combustion engines and electric vehicles in terms of various efficiencies. Now, please note that we will not be diving deep into IC engines. As far as emissions are concerned, we'll talk about the major emissions from IC engines. Though most of you already know it, I'll be talking about why the emissions are bad and then how are emissions regulated. Once we have done that, we'll talk about the benefits of electric vehicles from an emission standpoint. Once we have established the usefulness of electric vehicles, we'll talk about the key components of an electric vehicle. Here we'll primarily focus on battery pack and battery thermal management system. In addition to that, there are key components of an electric vehicle. Now, in addition to the above two, there are several key components of an electric vehicle. There is a battery management system which makes sure that the battery operates in specified operating conditions. Then you have your charger which has to be designed specifically to make sure that the battery gets charged at the right amount without uh, consuming battery life. Then you have your power trade components, motor and inverter. Finally, another important aspect of an electric vehicle is the reducer which is essentially a gearbox. Now please note that the last four components will not be covered in this particular course. So once we have talked about the different components of an electric vehicle, we'll talk about how these various components are engineered. Primarily with respect to engineering, there are two classic methods. The first method is just build and test it, use trial and error approach. But this method is always costly and time consuming. As I mentioned in the start of the lecture, virtual analysis is the way to go for this. Virtual analysis deals with the use of computational tools to test your components in a quick manner. As we talk about simulations, you will kind of realize that it's very cheap to perform simulations because you don't have to build the product. You will also experience that the simulation can actually run very, very quickly when compared to experiments. Finally, if the course actually adds value to you, you will see that simulations is an extremely scalable process. So once the course takes you through a journey of why electric vehicles are required, what are the various components and how they are engineered, we basically jump into computational modeling of these devices. Here we'll first take up a simple battery and we'll create a 1D numerical model for which we will derive an analytical solution. Once we have discussed the solution, I will also talk about the drawbacks of analytical approach and why for industry scale problems, numerical analysis is often the preferred method. And in order to teach you numerical analysis, you will be working on a course project. Here you will be working on a made up battery pack which contains five cells and you will be performing conjugate heat transfer analysis on it. Now the course also comes with additional course projects. So here you can actually see a single cell that's liquid cooled. The course will teach you the fundamental concepts to run such a simulation. However, this is an additional course project. You will be given all the supporting files and data points, but you are expected to finish the project on your own. Now, if you need to do more, then there is an additional project where you actually compare the liquid cooled configuration with an air cooled configuration. Here, though the results are obvious, you have to provide quantitative data to prove which cooling system is better. All right, with that, I would like to conclude this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.